bringen. You can now see. Yes, we are seeing it now. Okay. So you can sing on that side. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, may the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be a wonder our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great thing he hath done. Amen. Sorry for using a Amen. Sorry for using a high key. I hope to didn't strain you. <laughs> okay, let's have our study. Let's pray. Let us pray. Our oh, Father who art in heaven, thank you so much, Father, for the great things you do for us. Thank you for the daily bread you give us every day. Thank you for your love towards our souls. Dear Lord, we are erring children. May you forgive us where we go wrong. But King of glory, I pray that you may give us the strength to always do those things that please you. Give us your spirit and encompass with your holy angels, Lord, to guide us in paths of truth. As we study obedience, may you give us understanding. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm using my camera here. It's very dark. I don't know. I think you can see. My light is very little. <laughs> we can, yes. But it's good. Uh, yes, it's good. I know. I have very dim light here, so don't mind. It's not just so shiny. <laughs> yeah. So, it's actually good light. Okay, okay, it's fine. 
So though my face is dark, but I believe you're hearing me and I believe you're getting the things. Okay, we are having our study called Obedience, uh, is the title of our study. And uh, we are not having so much new things to look at, but I would like us to contemplate this because I was blessed by it when I uh, tried to look at it uh, and meditate upon it. We realize that we love to have the Holy Spirit. We have spoken of receiving the early and the latter rain, and we want to receive the Holy Spirit, but there's a, a serious issue that it is on condition of obedience to the will of God that we are to receive the Holy Spirit. Can did you? I hope you got that. It is on condition of obedience to receive the Spirit of God. If we don't have obedience, we are not able to what? Uh, to receive the Spirit of God. Now, for the study sessions, we have been having uh, Sabbath after Sabbath, Wednesday after Wednesday. We have been looking at the faith of Jesus in detail for several series. And we looked at what it means to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We asked, we also looked at what it means uh, to avoid, to keep away from idols. We also looked at what it means to have eternal life. We also looked at how we may truly love God with the whole of our hearts, the whole of our strength, the whole of our might, and with the whole of our souls. And then, and then we realized in the last study we had had that for us to receive, to love God with the whole heart and the whole mind, it can only and only be the work of the Holy Spirit in us. It can only be the work of the Holy Spirit in us. So that means for you and I who are waiting for the early and the latter rain, we actually are supposed to love God with the whole of our hearts and souls and strength for us to receive perfection, which love toward God wholeheartedly gives us the ability to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is the whole duty of man. And... If you and I have, would have fulfilled that duty in perfection, probation should have closed, and either Christ should have come, depending on the events of the last days. But why is it that those things have not yet happened? And why is it that we don't have the Holy Spirit? It's because we are lacking. So I realized that when we come to understand these steps of salvation, steps on how we may uh, be perfect in Christ, which perfection is actually loving God with the whole of our hearts and with the whole of our souls and strength and might, uh, that perfection to reach it, we must have the Spirit of God to give us that ability. But yet, to receive the Spirit of God we can only receive the Spirit of God as an answer to obedience. But, obedience to what? Obedience to His commandments. But therefore, it's not just all about obedience. It's not basically just obedience. Uh, we realize that even obedience itself, there are things that come before it for us to have that obedience. So I found it a very good... Uh, Thing for us to dig these things up to give us uh, a simple, uh, clear road or way how we may be saved or how we may give God glory. So praise the Lord today. While we have learned that uh, the duty, the whole duty of man is us to love him with the whole of our hearts, which gives us the ability to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, Having known that that's what gives us eternal life, having known that uh, that is what it means to believe in Jesus Christ being the Son of God, uh, we realize that this being, the, uh, uh, being possible only by the Spirit of God, it's important for us to learn how, what must we do for us to be able to receive the Spirit of God. 
And in, uh, you realize that when we receive the Spirit of God, that is when we may be able to have the fruits of the Spirit. You see? Love, gentleness, uh, temperance, patience, joy, peace. All these things are to come as a result of receiving the Spirit of God. Without receiving the Spirit of God, we cannot manifest those fruits in us. And also it takes us to the, what we call Peter's ladder. Uh, is that Second Peter chapter 1? From verse 5 downwards, those eight steps, basically you can call them seven, because faith is the first step, but which faith is supposed to be through all the steps. You realize that all those steps, it is only by faith, but a faith that works by love. And I explained in our studies what it means by a faith that works by love. So you realize that all these things to attain to them, we must first have the Spirit of God. So you realize that if we don't have the Spirit of God, then we are not understanding what is our duty to be able to have the Spirit of God. And though we may know our duty, and uh, that we must do for us to receive the Spirit of God, that means, uh, and we don't do it, that means we are too behind. So in my general, uh, in my studies and trying to view my Christian life, I realized that uh, when we don't have these steps, we are, I, I normally try to see as if I've moved no step at all, you see? And normally it's as if I've moved no step at all. So it's important for us to understand these steps. All right. We are going to begin from First Peter chapter 1. Let's open First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. We're having one hour for our study. Uh, we didn't intend it should be one should go this far but we are having beautiful time thanking god for the things he has done for us so uh, all is to the glory of god we have too much time for our things so let's have time for for the lord let's ha let's go to first peter um uh, chapter one and we see what the lord says there Verse 22, First Peter chapter 1, verse 22 says, Seeing ye have done what? Ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of, of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Now, for a diligent Bible student, you can already see such a beautiful summary within one verse of many aspects, many aspects that we have been studying. Look at verse 22, it says that, seeing ye have purified your souls. Now put that already, note that, purified our souls. Purified our souls, how? It says, seeing ye have purified your souls in what? In obeying the truth, obeying the truth, but by what means? Through the word, the spirit, and to. So, when you, when, how do we, now I'd like you to look at these things in a sequence. Remember, the plan of salvation uh, uh, is in order. There are steps for us to be saved. So, this is the beauty, beauty I saw in these verses. It just, it really gives you the steps exactly one must be followed before the other now look at that just seeing that seeing ye have done what purified your souls in obeying the truth that means 
It is by obeying what? By obeying the truth that our souls are purified. Put You note that down. Then secondly, obeying the truth, but through what? Through the Spirit. It's only through the Spirit that we can do what? We can obey the truth, which obedience works purification of our what? Of our souls. Now, let's go back again to the sequence. Now, it is through the Spirit that we have obeyed, and then this obedience that is by the Spirit leads us to what? And to unfeigned what? And to unfeigned love of the brethren. You see that? So, this Spirit is to uh, give us obedience to the truth, and then obedience to the truth purifies our souls, and that purification of our souls leads us to love the brethren with unfeigned love. And then uh, it continues to say, See that ye do what? See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So uh, uh, Peter emphasizes the fact at the end of the verse that see that you do what? You love one another with a pure heart fervently. Now, we have several times read of Romans chapter 13, verse 10, uh, which says that what? Let's go there, Romans chapter 13. When you go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, to tell you, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh, uh, and then it tells us that Keep the commandments of uh, let's keep the commandments of God, and that's the holy duty of man. In other words, that is the uh, condition for us to receive eternal life. But then, when you go again to Romans, uh, when you go to the teachings of, this, of 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 Jesus, he tells us that the brief the briefing of the two of the ten commandments is to love God with the whole of our hearts, and the second one is as unto the first. We are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. But the first one gives the ability for the second. And then when we read here in First Peter, we have seen this uh, verse that really summarizes up the the, the the steps we might go we must go through. One, we must obey the truth. Two, obedience to truth will will uh, is by the Spirit of God. This obedience to truth by the Spirit of God leads to purification of our souls. And this purification of our souls is to work in us a fervent love for the brethren. And that love for the brethren is the end of the Christian experience. It's the end that the Spirit of God is to lead us to. And then he affirms it and he says that, see that ye love one another with a pure heart. How? Fervently. Now, when we read in, uh, in Romans chapter 13, verse 10, it tells us uh, also the, the summary we had always been knowing. It says that love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is what? Love is the fulfilling of the law. All right. So, again and again, as we have been having our studies, we see that this is a big deal. God says that God is love. So meaning, for us to have perfection in God, still we must be, uh, in our Christian experiences, we must be led to the point of loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. But before we even think of loving our neighbors as, as we love ourselves, we must be able to think whether we love God with the whole of our souls, mind, spirit, you know, strength, and I explained before what that means, and we saw the depth of it. So, that gives us uh, clarification. So, now, our study about obedience. So, the question is, where is obedience falling in this sequence of Christian perfection? Where is obedience falling? When you look critically in that verse, in that verse, you realize that obedience uh, comes first. 
And uh, obedience comes, of course, truth comes first, and then there should be obedience to that truth, and that obedience is to be by the Spirit of God, and then uh, that leads our, our souls to be purified. So where does obedience fall? Obedience falls on step two, according to this verse, that is after the truth. After the truth. So I'd like to ask you, what is truth? Of course it is written that sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is what? Thy word is truth. So we know the word of God is truth. You see? You see? So this is not about truth mixed with error. I see. So uh, when we talk about truth, what, if truth and truth only was enough, Jesus wouldn't have gone ahead to say, sanctify them. But if he has said, sanctify them through thy truth, through thy word, thy word is truth, that means the truth as itself is to lead us to something. Are you seeing? The truth is to lead us, first of all, to obeying it, and that obedience to it is by the ability, is by the Holy Spirit in us, and then as, as immediately when we obey the truth by the ability of the Holy Spirit in us, what happens next is that our souls begin to be purified. I hope you can see that sequence. If we don't have obedience to the truth that we have in our ranks, we cannot be purified. And if we don't have the heart of the Spirit, actually, we cannot obey the truth. You see? That again tells, sends us to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, where it says that, not by might, not by what? Not by power, but by my what? By my Spirit. It's only by the Spirit of God that we may be able to obey the truth. So now, I made a statement at the beginning of our, of our study that we cannot receive the Spirit of God except if we obey the Word of God. It moves hand in hand. While the same Spirit is the one that gives us the ability to obey the truth, it's actually by that fact of obedience con persisting in it that we receive more and more of the Spirit. I hope you get that point. So, truth is truth indeed, and this means uh, to you and I, we may know the truth, we may have the present truth that is abundant in our ranks, denying all errors and not following anything that is unclean or anything that is in, uh, infiltrating the general conference. We may be uh, well uh, rejecting all error and we have truth, yet we are not obeying the truth. I hope you get that. That's why I'm bringing out this topic. Because truth and obedience are two distinct things. If truth and truth alone was enough, God wouldn't have said sanctify them through, through that word, which is truth. But he knew that that truth is to lead to our step. And that step is to bring us at last to sanctification, which sanctification is basically purification of our souls in the context of First Peter chapter 1. Therefore, we may have truth in uh, all forms of present truth, but when we don't obey that truth, are you seeing? That is where the issue is. And that's the basis of why we need to understand our duty of obedience to truth, obedience to the word of God. And mind you, you and I cannot obey the word of God except by the Spirit of God. I didn't say that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22 said it. It said that, uh, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through what? Through the Spirit unto, unto what? Unto unfeigned love of the brethren. So that means obeying truth is through the Spirit. 
without which we cannot be able to what? To obey the truth. All right. I hope that foundation already gives you the mind. Now, now uh, this explanation showing you that we may very well have truth everywhere in our midst, but when we actually don't obey it, this is a big problem as present truth believers, uh, be it mainstream, whatever truth they may have, uh, that we are having. We are having abundant of present truth. We learn it every Sabbath and again, but God is more pleased by something. God is not more pleased merely by the knowledge of the truth. He is pleased actually more so if you give obedience to that truth. You're welcome, Elder Eric. We have just started First uh, Peter chapter 1. Is the verse we have so far shared, which is giving a, 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 the basis of our study, actually. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22 to verse 24. Let's go to Samuel, First Samuel, chapter 15. Here we see, uh, uh, we see the scenario of obedience. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. It says, Now this is Saul and Samuel. And Saul was bringing the offerings, the sacrifices, etc., just as you and I may have sacrifices. Uh, in this context, we could call this the truth. You see, those lambs, those uh, doves and whatever the sacrifice for sacrificial uh, 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 things that were there, they themselves we had no problem. They were okay. They could have followed all the laws as the Leviticus says it. It must be clean. It is it is see. That can that is a symbol also of the truth. Those animals didn't have any problem. And in fact, if they were offered in the rightful heart, God would accept them. But why is it that they were rejected? Those animals also today symbolize the truth which you and I have in present truth. Yet, we might be doing the same thing Saul does. And it's your duty and my duty to, to examine ourselves if we are bringing to God sacrifices in the attitude of this man Saul, and if that is so, we need to understand what is God's uh, message towards that. Verse 22 of First Samuel chapter 15. He says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, behold to obey is what? Is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. I see. The Bible says that it is, it is, it is better to obey than to give several sacrifices unto God. So the sacrifices you and I might be having in our lives is, is living all for the sake of the truth. Living all for the sake of the truth and we don't touch anything that is error, but yet we may bring the sacrifices to God, holding on all truth, yet with the wrong attitude toward God. Yet, it is not yet we are not doing what? Not obeying the words of God. To obey is one thing, and to have truth is another. God is more pleased, in fact, is only and only pleased in us if we do what? If we obey. And realize that this obedience is made so by a certain, uh, uh, certain things 
two things basically which we are going to see next. And the same thing takes us to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 whereby God, it is impossible to what? To please God without faith. Are you seeing? So, that means obedience to truth has an element uh, of faith which faith alone uh, when we have faith in God um, pleases God. So, I hope you have noted that. While we have truth but we don't obey it, we don't please God. And therefore, it is better to obey the words or the truth than to merely have all pure truth around us as Adventists, shunning all error. I hope that comes home. Now, when we disobey, or when we don't keep the commandments of God, or what we can call the covenant of God that he has made with us and himself, what is the consequence? Because many of us, as we are in the present truth, we may be well satisfied because we gather with rightful people, because we teach right things, and, and, and by the way, we may be very good at contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Speaking of the mainstream, how they are now saying Jesus is the son of God by adoption. Jesus was installed or whatsoever such statements. We may be so good at contending for all those things and we may have all truth. Yet, dear brothers and sisters, God is not pleased by a mere possession of truth. It, obedience to God is better than what? Is better than sacrifice. It's better than sacrifice. And therefore, even when we come to repent to God, in Psalms 51, he tells us how uh, that God is not pleased by burnt offerings and all these sacrifices, but what God is delighted in. In Psalms 51, verse 16, Psalms 51, Verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in what? In burnt offerings. And then verse 17 speaks of the true sacrifices that God wants. The sacrifices of God are which one? They are these. The sacrifices of God are what? Are a broken spirit. A broken and what? And a contrite heart. O God thou wilt not do what thou wilt not despise so this brokenness of heart and contrition of spirit these things train us to be meek train us to be humble and lowly and by and by which is a result of the spirit of god in our hearts this actually produces in us the fruits of the what the fruits of the spirit again first peter chapter 1 told us that our souls are purified by what our souls are purified through uh by obeying the truth which obe which obedience to truth is through the what is through the spirit i see all right, so the sacrifices that God wants from you and me is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Not these, uh, you know, several things we may be able to do or having all truth or all such things. What is the consequence of disobedience according to the writings? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 11. If we fail to obey, if we take so many years in present truth and have all abundance of truth and yet at last fail to obey, what is the consequence? In other words, this is to alarm us to the necessity of obeying truth. And yet you and I have known that we can obey truth only through what? Only through the Spirit. That is said in First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. 
Having known that it's only through the Spirit, what does it tell us? Zechariah 4, 6 tells us it is by the Spirit of God alone. That tells us it is us then to seek in prayer and fasting that God may give us His Spirit to be able to do what? To be able to obey the truth. You and I, as we ourselves, we cannot be able to obey the truth of God. It's only by the Spirit. I didn't say that. I didn't form up that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, to a diligent student, you can see that sequence. All right, so now this is to alarm us such that we may seek the Lord for the obedience, which obedience alone will give us uh, uh, the ability for our souls to be purified. And when our souls are purified, what does it lead us to? Again, First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, it leads us to unfeigned love for the brethren. All right, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 3. Chap uh, Jeremiah, I hope you're there. Verse 3, it says, And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cast thee the man that does what? That obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Again, I read verse 3, says, And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cast thee the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, verse 4, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my what? Obey my voice, and do them. According to all which I command you, so shall ye be my what? So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. Question. Which is the only condition upon which God says that then ye will be my people and I will be your God. It is on a condition that if we obey the words of God. Do you see that? So this bringing us from Babylon, sorry, from Egypt can as well symbolize uh, spiritually bringing us from error. Maybe you have known the present truth away from the nominal uh, uh, teachings and then you come to the truth. Now, God says that when you have come to the truth, the only condi the, the condition upon which you can, you can and only be a, a, a person of God and God to be your God is if you obey the word of God. It's not all about you having so much truth. I hope you already see that. Having truth is one thing and obedience to truth is another. And all those steps must be fulfilled to lead us to the unfeigned love for the brethren. You see God? You see that? And that means we are to know God first, which knowledge of God is the knowledge of the truth. And then we need to obey that word. While we know of the cross of Calvary, we know that God loves us, it is, it is. He, we may have all that knowledge. But then, question to you and myself is that, do I obey those words that are written there? If you and I search our hearts and realize that we don't obey, then we have to seek the Lord for what can give us the ability to obey. Because disobedience is a clear definition of the fact that we don't have the agency that leads to obedience. And that is the Spirit of God. That's why Creation groaneth and waiting up to now for the latter rain. Are you seeing? Which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, so you realize that it is by that that we can have perfection. But without the Spirit of God, we can't obey. And the only way we can have the Spirit of God is if we seek for the Spirit of God with honestly. And by the way, by faith, then we can be able to what? We can be able to obey. So the Bible has said that the consequence of disobedience is curse. The consequence to you and I who believes the present truth, who have this truth, if we don't obey that truth next, is 
We are cursed, brothers and sisters. You see? So let us alarm us to the necessity of obedience to truth. Verse 4 said that, sorry, verse 5 says that, we are ending on verse, uh, verse, verse 18 is quite far, but so let's read, I'll see what you end. Verse 5 says that, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers. So, God is again showing that when we obey, it's the only way how, it's the only time when he's going to perform the oath. Are you seeing? Which he has sown unto our fathers. To give them a land flowing the milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I and said, so be it, O Lord. Are you seeing? The only uh, ability for you to attain to heaven, do you see now being defined here? You and I must obey. Yet obedience does not hang in the air as itself. I must obey, I must obey. No, it's not all about that. Obedience itself, as I say, it has things be behind it to make it genuine in the sight of God. Because there is an obedience that the Pharisees used to do. So even you and I today, we may do Phariseeism in, in obeying this truth, but yet we are not doing the true what? The true obedience that the Bible bids, me, bids you and I. Verse 6. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and do what? And do them. Do not hear only. When we have truth, we hear the truth. Many times we have a lot of Ellen White quotations we can have. We have a lot of of Bible scriptures, yes, well and good, but it says that hear them and do what? And do them. That's the consequence. Verse 7 says, For I honestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought, brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey what? Obey my voice. Verse 8 says what they normally did. Yet, let me put there another word. Yet they were in present truth. They did what? They, they obeyed not. No inclined their ear, but walked everyone in the imagination of what? Of their evil heart. Therefore, I'll bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them uh, to do. But they did them not. God forbid, dear brothers and sisters, now, uh, when we learn the truth, we need to obey. That's what we realize we need to obey. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25, verse 8. Matthew. I hope, I hope you're getting something uh, as we proceed. Matthew 28 talks of uh, the, 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 the curse or uh, shows uh, what will happen to those who fail to obey the word. Uh, the, the foolish virgins in verse 8, they came and, uh, and they said, and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that do what? To them that sell and buy for what? For yourselves. Now, question, why are they being sent? It's because, that means the wise themselves to get the oil, they had to go to somewhere to get the oil. But this oil was to give them ability to what? What made these five foolish virgins to come short of entering the kingdom? It's because of disobedience. If you go and search other scriptures, you realize it's because of disobedience to the word of God. But then, which agency gives us the ability to obey the word of God? It is the what? It is the Spirit of God. And how do we receive the Spirit of God? It is by earnest seeking for that spirit from the one who gives it. 
and that is Christ Jesus. So, there is a time that is coming that it will be too late to go and ask for the Spirit, but yet that Spirit, when it comes, there is a step next to take. We obey the truth. And there's a step next to take. We have to love God with the whole of our souls and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And then that's the end of salvation. So it will be too late for all the, those uh, processes. All right. Again, let's go to Acts chapter 5. Acts, Acts chapter 5, verse 32. We have a few minutes remaining. I just uh, need to go through this. Acts cha chapter 5, verse 32. All right, Acts chapter 5, verse 32 says, And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the what? The Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that do what? To them that obey. You see? The Spirit of God is given to those who obey. You see? If we have the present truth and Sabbath after Sabbath, we pray that God may give us his spirit. Pray that God may give us the early and the latter rain. Yet we do not go ahead to obey and have this truth uh, make uh, its fulfillment in our hearts. God cannot give us his spirit. He first tests us. And again, I repeat this. We realize that the spirit comes by, by obedience but yet it is the spirit that gives us the gives us the ability of obedience. These two things go hand in hand. So the beginning of the whole matter is to seek God for the spirit, which begins everything. And as we obey, God adds on us more and more of the Holy Spirit. So the condition upon which we are to receive the Holy Spirit is for us to choose to obey. This choosing to obey does not mean you and I are going to obey by our own strength. There is what gives us the ability to obey. You see, it is the Spirit of God. But before obedience, again I said, obedience is as a result of something. While we know that the Spirit of God gives us, gives, leads us to obey, but besides that, there is something step behind obedience that we have to take. We know the step we have to take is to seek the Lord uh, honestly for the Spirit. It's all right. But remember, there is truth before, before obedience. So what do we do with this truth is the question. What do we do with this truth? We are going to read uh, Acts of Apostles. Acts of Apostles. What was the work? Uh, page 40, 431, 431, the first paragraph, downwards. All right. It says, All who in that evil day would fearlessly serve God according to the dictates of conscience will need what? Will need courage and what? Firmness and a knowledge of God and his word. For those who are true to God will be what? Will be persecuted. Their motives will be impugned. Their best efforts misinterpreted. And their names cast out as evil. Satan will work with all his deceptive power to influence the heart and be cloud the understanding. To make evil appear what? Good and evil and good evil, sorry. The stronger and purer the faith of God's people and the firmer their determination to obey him, the more fiercely will Satan strive to stir up against them the rage of those who, while claiming to be righteous, trample upon the law of God. It will require the firmest trust, the most heroic purpose to hold fast the faith once delivered to the saints. So obedience to the word of God is the one that will give us uh, that firmness and ability. 
again, we will find something ahead that I want, uh, I want us to see. The second paragraph says, God desires his people to prepare for the soon coming crisis. Prepared or unprepared, they must all meet it. And those only who, I don't know if you, got, you have noted that in your heart. Prepared or unprepared, sister or brother, if you are planning not to prepare, or maybe if you are preparing, the issue is, they must all meet it. We must all meet it. And those only who have brought their lives into conformity to the divine standard will stand firm at that time of test and trial. When secular, reg uh, when secular rulers unite with ministers of religion to dictate in matters of conscience, then it will be seen who really fear and serve God. When the darkness is deepest, the light of a godlike character will shine the brightest. When every other trust fails, then it will be seen who have an abiding trust in Jehovah, and while the enemies of truth are on every side, watching the Lord's servants for evil, God will watch over them for good. He will be to them as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Amen. All right, now, the basis of what I want, let's go down. We are going to find it down. That is page... 562. 562. Just still moving. All right, around here. 562. The third paragraph. All right. 562. The third paragraph. We read this. Please give ear to this. This is what this is the heart of what I want to tell you about obedience. <clears throat> it says, "There are those who profess holiness, who declare that they are holy, the Lord's, who claim a right to the promises of God, while refusing to render what, while refusing to render obedience to His commandments." These transgressors of the law claim everything that is promised to the children of God. But this is presumption on their part. For, Jen, for John tells us that true what? True love for God will be revealed in what? In obedience to all his commandments. It is not enough to believe the theory of truth to make a profession of faith in Christ, to believe that Jesus is no impositor and that the religion of the Bible is no what? Is no cunningly devised fable. You see, we may, many times you say, you know, we have not believed in cunningly devised, devised fables. We have pure truth. We don't believe such and such things. You know, Christ being the adopted son, it is We believe pure truth. Yes, we may believe that Jesus is no imposter and that the religion of the Bible is no cunningly devised fable. It goes on to say that he that saith, I know him. Sorry. I made some mistake here. Just a moment. It says that he that saith, I know him and keepeth not what? Not his commandments, John wrote, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Now, this is talking about those who have the truth. You see? But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are, he, we are in him. He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. John did not teach that. Now, please listen to this. I'd like you to understand. Let no one take me wrong to say, you know, obedience, obedience, and you task your mind, task your body to the word, to the thing, obedience. It's not about obedience. Listen to this. It says, we need to know how that obedience should, do, should be done. It says that this. John did not teach that salvation was to be earned by what? 
by obedience. Again, I'm saying this. John did not teach that salvation was to be earned by obedience. But that obedience was the fruit of faith and love. Please note that. It should be a fruit of what? A fruit of faith and love. Question. Love and faith. How do we attain to faith? Of course it is written. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is the truth. But we must react on, those, on that truth by faith. And that faith should not be alone. That faith must be a faith that works by what? That works by love. The truth of the word of God should give us an understanding of the love of God that is manifested or revealed therein. And that is to lead us to obedience. Yet faith and love are acquiring these things. We must seek for the Spirit of God to give us the faith, to give us the love, and that will result into the obedience of truth. And now when we obey, we shall be able to have our souls be purified. And then this purification of our souls will lead us to have unfeigned love for one another. Which unfeigned love first begins by loving God with the whole of our hearts. So I hope you see the sequence. These steps are to help us to know what we should do and where we are standing right now. There's, no, there's nothing like self-deception here, brothers and sisters. Truth is clear, and it can tell you whether you are in the truth, whether you are saved, where you're being saved, whether you are in the faith, or you are not. It's very clear. There's no, there's no being like, you know, I don't know how, what's my state. The state is clear. And when we are moving in Christianity, we must have the witness in ourselves. If we believe in Christ, that he is the son of God, or if we do not. First John told us that. It goes on to say, as, I, as, I, as we finish, ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, he said, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. If we abide in Christ, if we love, sorry, if the love of God dwells in the heart, our feelings, our thoughts, our actions, I repeat that, our feelings, our thoughts, our actions will be in harmony with the will of God. The sanctified heart is in harmony with the precepts of God's law. Amen. I hope that gives you the point. All right, now. When we go and read uh, somewhere, it says that sanctify them through their word, that word is truth. The question is that you realize that this sanctification is actually what we can also call purification of our souls in the context of First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. So now, I'd like to ask, to ask ourselves, what then is true sanctification? So far we have seen that obedience is to be as a result of the or the fruit of what? The fruit of faith and love. I see. Which we can attain by seeking God for his spirit earnestly. And now when we obey, God can, can now be willing to bestow on us more of his spirit. And when we are receiving the spirit step by step, we are able to have the fruits of what? The fruits of the Holy Spirit. So question, what is true sanctification? Or what is true purification? Lest we deceive ourselves, uh, maybe thinking maybe we, you know, we are purified uh, or sanctified. We are reading again in the same book, Acts of Apostles, Page five six five. Five six five. Let me this five six five. Uh, the paragraph one. Paragraph one. This is it. I hope you're there. It says, 
True sanctification means what? Hope when you read that, you just connect together all the dots of what we have been studying. I hope really you have been being benefited from those studies because as for me, as far as truth is concerned, this is something I realized that we have no shortcuts around this. Though love, love, love may sound a low standard st uh, definition to some, but that's the standard. All right. So anyone who believes in Christ is seeing the, the, the what? Is seeing um, the beauty in this. So it says that true sanctification means perfect love. Means perfect obedience. Perfect what? Perfect conformity to the will of God. We are to be sanctified to God through what? Through obedience to the truth. Again, this connects you to First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, where it talks about purification. Purification is by obedience to truth. Which purification still here, Sister Nenua is saying, we are to be sanctified to God through what? Through obedience to truth. Our conscience must be purged from dead works to serve the living God. We are not yet perfect. Did you hear that? We are not yet perfect, but it is our privilege to cut our way from the entanglements of self and sin and advance to what? To perfection, which is by obedience. Great possibilities, high and holy attainments are placed within the rich of all, you and I. Amen. So, dear brothers and sisters, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience to truth is better than having abundance of present truth, yet actually uh, not embracing it um, Yet it is we are not obeying it to lead us to love God. So, having known that that uh, <clears throat> truth comes first, then obedience comes next, and then what comes next? Of course, purification. And then what comes next? Purification. Uh, what comes next is after purification is unfeigned love. You see, for the brethren. See, which love begins with God and then to fellow brethren. But this obedience is through the what? It's through the Spirit of God, or it is by the Spirit of God. So, truth is the beginning of it. <clears throat> hearing and hearing the Word of God. By then, we have to seek God for His Spirit to give us ability to obey. Now, on one hand, there is a curse. A curse is that if we don't obey the truth, we are cursed. But on the other hand, there is good news that when you and I realize that we cannot really obey the word of God, we cannot really do the works of righteousness in ourselves by our own ability. There is good news that there is one who gives the agency by which we may obey. The same person to whom the wise virgins who knew how they received that ability told the wise virgins, please go and buy from the one who sells. That agency is the Spirit of God, and the one who has it is God. And it's your part and my part to not... Uh, Pray, you know, by custom, but to pray honestly, with a sincere heart. Remember, remember Psalms 51. It told us that a broken heart and what? And a contrite spirit. What can lead you and I to that? Of course, it is the very spirit of God that is interceding towards our souls with groanings that cannot be uttered. But then we are to accept our weaknesses we are to accept how wretched and sinful we are. Let that break our hearts. But we should not do it on our own. We should let the word of God, the truth, do it in us. That means it should be a diligent study of that word. 
that gives us that ability. And that means if we do it that way, we shall have a true sorrow, a godly sorrow for sin. Lest we have that sorrow like that of Esau and like that of uh, other, part, other people. You see? So what makes a difference is if we study the word of God and the word of God is the one which gives us that contri contrition of soul and brokenness of heart. It's because we see the love of God there mixed with warning. So God says, I place before you death and what? I place before you blessing and what? And curse. Therefore choose blessing. So brothers and sisters, again and again, we are called to seek God in prayer and fasting that we may be able. Because however much we may try on our own, God says, it is neither by might not by power, but by his spirit. If we expect the latter rain and the early rain, we have a part to play. We have to obey. We have to seek God for the spirit, for obedience. That marks the end of our study today. I hope you have uh, understood, and I hope you have learned something. May God bless you. Let us have a prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for thy word of truth. Thank you for <clears throat> the lesson we have had today. Please, Lord, may you give us thy spirit to give us understanding of your word and to melt our hearts, to break our hearts, to help us, Father, be humbled at your feet and know that we are weak and cannot do anything without you. Father, again and again, I come to learn that, Lord, if we are to have victory, we cannot say we will have you sometimes and sometimes we don't. We must lean upon you all the time, all the time. Our thoughts, our works, our speech, our thoughts must be upon you and upon you and upon you. Once we lose the hold, once we lose the hold, we backslide. Now, Father in heaven, may these things humble us down. The reality of the fact that we cannot live an hour without you. Empty us of self which wants to live on its own. Lord, give us your spirit to help us obey your word. And in obedience to your word, Father, fulfill your promise to us to give us the early and the latter rain. That the purification of our souls may lead us to perfection. This is our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.